folks time for another update um, been kind of working off and on for a couple of weeks now picking away at things uh, two main things I uh, got a new dimmer switch for the headlights uh, that thing was in pretty rough shape um, and also got a new fuel pump installed oil changed new filter that sort of stuff so um, shot a little bit of video while doing each one of those so uh, take a look at that and uh, kind of get an idea of what I did and how the process went uh, for that uh, dimmer switch so I'm working on headlights um, specifically the dimmer switch I did take out the headlight switch it was actually installed upside down so I flipped it over um, install it the correct way so at least I mean it doesn't matter it still works the same either way but uh, at least this way off is down park headlights are on uh, so if I ever do break down and buy another overlay for it it'll match um, but the main thing I'm working on is I haven't had headlights since I've owned it and uh, one thing I noticed uh, when I first got it, the first night I had it, I ran around when it was getting dark, tested all the lights, and figured, you know, I'll try the headlights. They're easy to see at night if they're working. Turned it on, nothing. Um, stomped on this little foot switch a few times, and I saw one quick flash from the uh, passenger side headlight, and then a flash from the floor, and smelled a lot of bad burning smells. So I turned it off, left it alone, and haven't bothered with it since today, or until today. Um, but this is what, this is the old one, and uh, it's got some problems. Um, so this is where the power, the power comes in. And I've, I've got the new one over here kind of wired up. The previous owner did take out the uh, connector that's on here. So these two, this one and this one, are the original connectors that would have been in the Jeep or the pins that would have been in the connector. Uh, this one I just had to install. I have a little kit. Uh, someone did splice this at some point. This is supposed to be a black wire. It goes to, this goes to the low beams and uh, the battery is unplugged by the way. Um, just you know I'm, these are all bare wires right now. I'm, it is unplugged. Uh, so this should be a black wire someone spliced in a green um, and I had to put a new terminal on it because this is the one that was on it. And this is what was sparking um, the day that I stomped on the foot switch. You can see the plastic burned off. The rest of it's over here. That burned right off of it. Um, and then in trying to take it apart, I did find the double tapped red, red and white and white and red wires here that terminal did break off as well uh, but fortunately the the connector's in decent shape it just needed a little clean on the inside with some sandpaper and it's uh installed um i did i did test it uh, i'm not going to bother with it now the battery is unplugged but the headlights do work um when the high beams are on i get the little indicator up here which does work uh, i passenger side works in high and low driver side the low beam is out but the high beam works so that's good. Um, I know that works now. I still don't have the dash lights. So the, the lights that are supposed to illuminate the speedometer when the uh, headlights are on or park lights are on or the gauge, the uh, temperature and oil gauge or fuel gauge. Um, and my turn signal indicator lights don't work still, even though the turn signals work. So clearly things aren't perfect, but from the outside, they appear to function, which I guess is the main thing. Um, so I think I'm going to have to buy a new harness for this. They do, uh, places like Advance Auto, O'Reilly's, and Rock Auto. I got this, this is where I got this little guy from. Um, they sell pigtails that just plug right in. And, uh, I think I'm going to have to break down and get one of those. Uh, this is just a time bomb sitting down here on a metal floor with, uh, you literally stomping on it with your feet. Um, that is just a short circuit waiting to happen. Um, and with the amount of electricity or amount of current that comes through these this wire here specifically to power the headlights, um, a short circuit here would not be a good idea. And clearly stuff like this 
is what happens when you short that circuit. Um, and this was a pretty groggy terminal. Uh, this is the one that, where's the other one? Oh, wait, there's one here. So that was it. Uh, that one's cut off. This is the old switch. I don't know if it worked or not, but with terminals like that, it wasn't gonna work ever again anyway. This was $8. And it fixed the problem. Um, So a couple other things, uh, you know, I'm still trying to track down where these wires go, um, kind of what these custom switches are in here. You know, somebody installed this. There's another one up here. Um, I have a feeling this is for the blower motor because that switch is, you know, this should be the blower motor here and it's missing high and low and off. Um, wipers, wiper, uh, windshield washer. Those switches are still there and hooked up. Uh, they don't work while they're there. This one is for the heater blower motor and it's missing. Um, so I need to figure out where, you know, that's obviously over there. Figure out where that goes. Um, you know, things like this. I've got two green wires with a white trace here. Um, I think this is the horn. And that's the black with the yellow trace that would have plugged in um, right here. I'm going to cut that loose. I mean, the length is perfect. It ends right there. Um, speaking of horns, <coughs> I'll show you those. That's another thing that hasn't worked since I've had the Jeep. Um, you know, I obviously, looking at the steering wheel inside of the, the horn button and stuff, everything was so corroded and rusted, I'm not surprised. Uh, and somebody else clearly worked around it. Um, you know, the little relay is still down here. It's still hooked up. Uh, the black and yellow wire is still here. This is a custom wire that somebody installed. I don't know. That goes into the engine or into the... Through the firewall and back under the dash. I'll figure that out. Um, it's actually hooked straight into the, the power side of this horn, so it's probably... Someone rigged that up to just fire one horn. Um, I did actually uh, test these today. Both of them work um, just by simply, you know, hooking up the battery and then running a uh, uh, jumper lead from straight from the battery positive to here. And just disconnected it and tapped it on there, and the horn does work just fine. Uh, both of them work, so that's cool. Um, I know it's an issue with something between here and the steering column more than the issue with the horns themselves so that is great news i'm happy about that okay so as you can see that thing was in pretty rough shape um i'm glad to have it replaced i did uh since that video was shot i do now have the pigtail for it i ordered that the day after i shot that video uh, that's probably last week that it was shot um so i do have the pigtail i will get that installed and I'll make a little video about that too. You can kind of see what I'm thinking and what I did there to fix that. Um, the next part was the fuel pump uh, that's installed. So let's take a look and kind of show you how I did that and what I found there and kind of what the end result was of that whole process. Okay, so today is fuel pump day. Um, here's the old one. It's going to get replaced. I got a new one sitting here. Um, also got some simple green and a little scrubby brush here. I'm going to clean some of this smuts off of here just so it doesn't end up down in that cavity. Um, so I'm going to do that. Get the new one in, buttoned up, and uh, crank it up and see what happens. Hopefully that fixes our uh, excessive amount of gas in the oil problem. Uh, this is the part, by the way, to do. Um, this is from Rock Auto. But these parts are available anywhere. There you go. I think it was about eight bucks. Is it the best quality part? Who knows? But eight bucks worth a shot. Okay, that's done. Uh, there's the new pump installed. Um, it's pretty simple. It's uh, two bolts, one on each side, one there. Uh, the fuel line up to the carb and then the fuel from the pump or from the uh, tank 
And then uh, the kit came with two gaskets. I only installed one. I don't know why there's two. There's another one here. Um, I guess if it leaks oil out of there or something, I'll know. Um, there's not supposed to be any fuel in there. It all stays, you know, obviously inside the pump. And uh, there's no oil, shouldn't be any oil pressure up there. Um, but, you know, if the PCV or something, I guess, lets pressure build in the crankcase, I guess it could blow out there. Or maybe oil that gets flung around inside of there could leak out. So I'll keep an eye on that for a leak. Um, clearly, this engine is not a stranger to leaks. Um, and if you look, a little bit of brake clean that I was using to clean off the old gasket and to clean up the boss there to remount the pump. The AMC blue paint is still under all this grunge. So maybe this old engine will get a degreasing after all, um, especially if it's got the original paint or somebody took the time to repaint it. Doubtful. Probably the original. Um, so this is the old one. And uh, you can see it's, you know, someone used RTV to install this one along with the gasket. Um, I'm hoping they didn't do that for a reason and I'm gonna get an engine bay covered in gas, but we'll see. Um, it's hard to see, but when I took it out, there was gas inside of here. Uh, obviously gas should not be coming into here, um, but there was gas coming out of here. Gas sitting inside of this little lever. You know, this rides on the camshaft, and uh, so the gas is actually uh, had, been, had been pooling in here. So that leads me to believe that the diaphragm in this pump has probably failed. And as it was pumping gas, it was getting gas up to the engine or to the carburetor, but it was also some of it seeking past the leaks in the diaphragm down the pump rod and out onto this lever and eventually into the engine. Um, I've heard that's common. I've heard a lot of CJ guys complain about it, and this is effectively a, exactly the same as the CJ5 from the same era. Um, yeah, pumps look the same. Everything matches. Um, this one came out relatively easily. The gasket was a bit of a bear to get off, the old gasket. Um, I do have a scraper. I don't know where it went. Well, anyway. Oh, it's way down here. Get catching tools and oil that leaks out of your rotten fuel pumps. Um, I just have one of these from like Advance Auto. And it's got a little razor blade on it. Worked great. Uh, the gasket material was pretty hard and it actually chewed up the blade pretty good. But I got it clean. Gave the block a little douching with some uh, brake clean. Careful not to get it into the actual hole. And um, while the pump was off, I did have this rag here stuffed in that hole. Um, just to keep debris from the gasket or chunks of metal that came off of this. Um, and the brake clean out of the block. Um, so I guess next I'm going to pull this ignition wire off here, off the coil, so it'll just turn over. I don't want it to try to start. Uh, I just want it to turn over. And then I want to make sure that I see this guy filling up with fuel. And also want to make sure I don't see a geyser down here. Uh, this didn't take much to tighten it back up. But then again, it didn't take much to loosen it either. Um, as far as how far I had to turn it. Um, yeah, we'll give that a shot and see. Hopefully that fixes our issue with too much or with gas getting into the oil i guess i say too much there should never be any noticeable amount of gas in your oil at least i don't think there's a good reason for that uh this one i don't have any good way to show you uh the oil is so thin that it runs off of that dipstick like brake fluid and it's probably two quarts over full now uh, after i did the oil change it was right on the full line so that's a lot of gas and it's a very, that's a lot of gas for only running for 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, so hopefully that's the culprit and not that guy. Um, it needs some work, but hopefully it's not overfueling the engine so much that it's putting what amounts to a quarter or two of gas in the oil in under 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, crank it up or at least crank it over. See if that'll build pressure. Check for gas up here. And then I guess next, going to back it up to a flat spot in the driveway and try to do an oil change. Get all this skunky gas oil mix out of it. Um, yeah, see what happens. All right, so just cranked it over for about 10 seconds. I now have incredibly old, stale, rotten gas back in the fuel filter. Check, it runs good on this old junk. 
Um, I don't see any leaks yet. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and proceed and back up, get on a flat spot, change oil. Um, I did unconnect, disconnect the plug wire or the ignition coil just so it wouldn't kind of crank. I just want it to turn over. And uh, yeah, good to go. So, so far no leaks that I can see. Um, again, better safe than sorry. Um, yep, cool. So I've changed the oil. Got my new filter on there, same as the old one. Added some more oil. And for reference, you can see about where it's at, just below the full line. That's after it has run for about two or three minutes just to circulate, fill the filter. So I am going to crank it up, let it run before the sun goes down here and see if it fills the crankcase with gas again. Okay, so after running for about 15 minutes, um, fuel pump, no leaks. Um, carb is not leaking any worse than it was. Um, it's pumping fuel just fine. Um, the thing still knocks though. And uh, the good news is the oil is not full of gas now. The oil level went up just a hair. And I don't know if that's because it just i checked it too soon after it ran or if it's still putting gas in the oil um i'm not gonna throw in the towel yet until i rebuild this and just make sure that it's not over fueling it runs like garbage and uh, uh, if that still doesn't fix it i'm gonna get a compression tester and uh, run down the cylinders check for compression um but yeah we'll see where this goes all right so you know you can see that went pretty well um it seems to have fixed the oil. Uh, it seems to have fixed the gas and the oil problem. Uh, you know, I'm still going to change, rebuild the carb, and get that cleaned up, uh, just as a safety measure. It's leaking pretty bad, and a lot of the gas is leaking onto the exhaust manifold, which fire and gas, or heat and gas, don't don't mix well. Um, <clears throat> so I think gonna keep looking at those things and I guess try to figure out what to do next with that um, so this week hopefully um, I'm gonna like I said get that pigtail installed for the dimmer switch I also want to work on a few other electrical things and just kind of start working and picking away you know pick a project kind of finish it up and uh yeah keep plugging away at it so thanks for watching I, I do appreciate it um and a special thanks to those of you that have taken the time to subscribe or comment um you know i'm glad to see people enjoy the videos and uh you know i'm sitting here kind of rambling around uh, filming things and talking about things so I'm, I'm glad people are finding it helpful or at least entertaining and if you if you subscribed thank you um you know, I, I enjoy seeing your videos as well. It's uh, fun seeing other people working on these and kind of seeing what others are doing. And uh, maybe feel a little less crazy that I'm spending money on this. Other people are doing it too, right? So it's got to be okay. Um, but yes, thank you all. And uh, be back soon with some more updates. Uh, got a couple things coming that I think you might find interesting. Um, but we'll see. I haven't quite figured out how to shoot that yet or uh, what to do there, but it'll be soon. And uh, got another couple little projects to work on that I'll I'll get some videos out for you. So thanks again, and uh, have fun working on your old jeeps.